So I would like to invite the winner of Robotu 2017, Kogito team and Yuzu Kerovsky.
after five months of driving, uh, like every other weekend and during the weeks, um, I found out that when the robot goes on a small step on the road and, and goes down, and it has the beer bottle at the end, as, as the gas tube hits the ground, it goes and forms. Uh, my power connection was loose, so it kind of wiggled a bit, and, and the computer rebooted. And, and that took me five months to discover, right? And so, so I kind of fixed it, it was a big bit of tape, just it's an easy fix. Um, I strongly believe that in the last round yesterday, when, it, when we went over the newly paved area in the park, which they finished on Friday, there was this small step. And I think if I didn't fix it, that's where I would lose the power. But I didn't, because it was already fixed, because I tested it, and it just worked, right? And, and I didn't have any other problem whatsoever. Um, again, compared to other teams, which this model didn't work, that, that motor doesn't even move, and, and stuff like that. It just has to work, right? Um, which brings me to the third point. I did have uh, issues with uh, software reliabilities. With, so I finished the hardware, but I haven't finished the software. I never finished the software. So I had issues there, but the reliability uh, uh, sorry, sorry, the reality of it uh, helps me overcome this. So, specifically, yesterday the first round starts, my robot goes, and not that far from the starting point, it just leaves the road. I'm like, boy, what happened? Um, turns out I have this deep neural network module in there which tries to detect the road, and it wasn't trained in like rainy weather. Uh, I just don't have any label data for that. Um, so, it didn't work. Uh, so the robot thought, well, this is not the road, that's not the road, but that's at least in the direction where I think I should go. So it went straight to the grass. Uh, so I turned that module off. And that sounds scary, right? It's the first round of robot tour I'm turning road detection off. Do I even have a chance to do anything? Well, I do, because there is another module uh, running in parallel, which is naive. Uh, but it's still there. Uh, detect the green. Detect the brown. If it's green or brown, it's probably not the road. And that's what I will use for the compilation. There are very consequences. Um, this detection is not as good. So, in many places, the robot wasn't sure if it's actually rotating correctly or not. So, that's why you saw it moving so slowly, so often, because it just wasn't sure. But hey, I could turn no detection off and still keep moving, right? So, so that's awesome. Uh, and second time this, this, this uh, triggered was the third round. Uh, we had a bit of a tension on the starting spot where uh, there were two teams starting at the same 50 square centimeters at the same time. Um, I was there first, so I started first, and then I realized, well, they are moving faster, I shouldn't be in their way, and, and they are bigger. So I, I paused the robot, pulled it back, let them go, um, unpaused the robot again, and this weird start procedure wasn't tested. Um, so although initially I was receiving data from the laser scanner with the mirror, uh, after the repeat procedure, uh, I didn't. Um, unfortunately, the sanity check for the robot, am I getting all the data, is in the beginning. So it, it passed, and then it didn't work anymore. Um, but what the robot does, it notices that it does not have complete information from all the sensors, so it goes slower saying, okay, something is not right, but standing here is not going to help me. So it goes slower, but it goes. And, and there are other sensors. There is the other laser scanner. There is camera. Um, so it was ridiculous, this little, even more slower than, than normal in, in the third round. But it still kept moving, and it had well, enough information to move on and, and, and move on safely. So I, I think these were the three critical parts. It was the testing, uh, the reliability, and, and the redundancy. Since there is no more slide, I think, uh, it would be best if you just ask questions. Be it about the sensors or about the testing or, or, or whatever it work. Yes, sir. So you were saying that when the robot wasn't sure about the robot, it actually slowed down. <coughs> so what kind of, how does the robot know that it's not sure about that? Ah, uh, I have a very crazy uh, probabilistic path planner, it's the right bottom corner. It, it builds up um, a local map of obstacles, which is a probability grid. And so what it notices over time is that if it goes, uh, goes fast, it increases the probability of going wrong. So, so that puts the pressure on going slower. 
So it's based on the obstacle map. Yes. And, and when that, that obstacle map yesterday wasn't that nicely separated between non-traversable and traversable, uh, the, the middle part was reddish. Um, so it went slower. Uh, what's the main bot that I make your robot fast? Uh, well, um, depends on how fast. Um, it's, fast. It's, it's, it's set up for half a meter per second, and then we turn the module off the grid, we do half, half a meter per second just fine. 60 centimeters it can do, but I'm starting to get comfortable. At 70, with the beer barrel, when the road surface is rough, the motors don't make it. So, so that, that's one. And, and second is, uh, the CPU load is pretty close to 100%, and, and there's certain control latency. It takes time to process the data, like uh, I'm doing stereo vision. And at some point, I have like 18,000 uh, point, uh, bound points coming in, and just iterating through them takes time, right? Uh, so I'm subsampling and doing that stuff. But like more computational power and more physical power. And are you satisfied with the step or not? Uh, in general, I'm very satisfied. Uh, they, they, they might be a bit borderline for this competition. Uh, I have to do like three iterations of setting the power and, and the gearbox right. Uh, but it works. Uh, it, it makes the nice, nice sound to everybody else. Yeah. Um, and also, I was um, last year on the secret project competition. And with the stepper motors, I had <coughs> such precise control that I could, by odometry, just travel several meters and grab the cube which was there. But you have also encoders, not only. I have both steppers and encoders, yeah. But, but again, the steppers are so trivial to control, like, yeah. do three steps in the direction, done. And then you have pretty much no one. Are you losing steps? Uh, Because I plugged everything and what happens, right? Uh, 
I do one, one thing, does it work? Yes. Let's do the other one. There are next points for the loop. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm still thinking like uh, the competition started as a motivation, as a segue to personal transportation. Um, I know that back then we were thinking more about cars. I'm still thinking about really personal transportation. <laughs> um, so, for example, I bought uh, an electric skateboard a year ago, or maybe two, so, maybe. And, and that, if, if you think about it, it's actually awesome. If you have something that has 10 kilograms and can transport you 25 kilometers with pretty high speed, um, that's personal transportation to me. Uh, so I'll continue thinking, well, is there a way out to have such a small vehicle and have it open?